Hi there, listener. You're about to experience Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games, and there will be plenty of game talk, but also copious amounts of crude, off-color, offensive, and immature speech. So if you are of a rather sensitive humor constitution, we're just letting you know what you're in for with this show. It has games. It has jokes. You know, just games and jokes. Take the games, take the jokes, and have a good time. Hello, Internet. Welcome to another Tadpog podcast. A show that happens twice a week where two old guys talk about old games. It's very quaint. Yeah, we're just, talk, we're just talking. Mm-hmm. Just talking. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this week, Original Flavor Wednesday, means that we're talking about a game off IGN's Top 100 Super Nintendo Games. And this week we are at number 41, Ogre Battle, March of the Black Queen. Yes. Ogre Battle. It's not Ogre Tactics. That's the same series, but... Same series, but yeah, later on. But before we get to that, I'm your bearded host, Tyler. And I was trying to think of what to do for this segment today. So I called my mom and I was like, what's uh, your favorite embarrassing story from when I was little? Mm -hmm. And she told me. And what is it? You've got a lot of them, so... It was... um, (laughs) It was the same. I've talked about this trip to Florida because that's where I went and played Sunset Riders in the arcade. Yeah. And where my friend Mitch showed me his X Men book that we talked about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But during this, uh, we went with my aunt and uncle and went to uh, Sanibel Island. Sanibel? Sanibel, I think that's it. Something like that in, okay. in Florida. And, or Sanibel Island somewhere else. I don't know. Did Florida. you swim with, swim with the dolphins? I wish. Mm-hmm. My parents, they, they would have been too scared at that point to ever let me, yeah, <laughs> what But with my aunt and uncle, and we're sitting around in the, the hotel room, or it was like some, maybe it's like a beach house, something like that. We're in there, and I fart really loud, and it makes my uncle laugh. So I'm, I'm elementary school, I think. I think I'm in uh, third, fourth grade. So they all laugh. So, of course, I... I do it again. You owe it to them. Yeah. You owe it yeah. to yourself. So I've got this audience now. Give me give me your approval. So I keep doing it and keep doing it, and they're laughing harder and harder. And my mom says, you better watch it. You're going to mess yourself. So I laugh at her. I keep doing it. What, what does that mean? That means you're gonna you're gonna shit in your pants. <laughs> okay. So I keep doing it because I'm having to I'm having to dig deeper to get keep 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 it up. So at one point, uh, like Jed, Jed Clampett. <laughs> shooting in the pond oil just came up like i didn't like just like have a little bit come out like i shit myself hard in the living room you were really you were really digging deep i was for those really parts. digging deep and like they talk about like the look on my face to where i'm grunting and then just sheer just shock i cannot believe this has happened and <laughs> was it was it normal shit or was it like was it, there something different about it being way up in you? I don't I don't recall. <laughs> I just recall like it not being the result I expected. <laughs> just ultimate shock on my face, and I get up and I run to the bathroom and I just cry for the rest of the night. <laughs> just that just that shitty shame cry. <laughs> oh, I know that well. So yeah, I'm not. So, I, I wouldn't talk to anybody or look at anybody until the next morning. <laughs> I'm not ready to share my shitting story. I will one day. I'm going to save that, I think, for maybe an episode Nikki's on. Uh, <laughs> okay. I just want to get her. Okay. Good. You I know, know what story talking I'm about. talking about. Talking yeah. about. Yeah, Nikki has to be here for that episode. <laughs> I figure you might Nikki have and maybe questions Josh. for her. <laughs> yeah, Josh as well. <laughs> uh, I'm Dave, your bespectacled host. And I tried really hard, Tyler. I want to have a special story for this episode since we're talking about um, Ogre Battle. Mm-hmm. I thought about what kind of story could I tell that is appropriate for this game. I I technically have one battle story, which I think I've already shared, and I have maybe one ogre story, just one <laughs> ogre story. Um, and that is, for the longest time, this kind of ties into something you talked about a long time ago, um, where you said that... You, you may, might have even said that Meg has a term for when you don't know how to pronounce something because you've only read it and you've never heard it pronounced. 
I, I, that was uh, some, it was something I saw on Facebook okay. that people were, were posting. Yeah, if there's not a term for that, like we need to coin that term. I, I agree. And post it on the, Urban Dictionary. The Germans probably have a have a they, word for it. They, <laughs> yes, you're probably right. We need the we need the English version. Um, for the longest time, I thought that the word ogre was pronounced org. And I, and I don't know why I, I when I was like I guess six or seven I used to watch uh, Gummy Bears mm-hmm. uh, the Disney cartoon and the main villains and like the main villain was a was a human but like there were other like ogres they called them mm-hmm. but they looked like orcs and I think I had heard like orcs somewhere else and I just figured they were the same thing just with a G instead of a C mm. like I thought it was like a licensing issue or something like at six years old. Um, I don't know. I know right. I'm like, I understand. <laughs> oh, copyrighted material. I understand. Uh, yes. <laughs> I understand. Sometimes, sometimes a cartoon wants to play the Jeopardy theme, but they can't afford it. So they, <laughs> so they play something that's, I don't know, a few notes off. I, I could, I could grasp that when I was six or seven. Um, but I couldn't grasp that these creatures are called ogres and not orgs. And I think that's forgivable for a six or seven year old mm-hmm. child. Uh, cut to nine years later, I'm playing World of Warcraft, or not World of Warcraft, Warcraft 2, mm-hmm. Tides of Darkness. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm explaining to a friend that I need I need to produce more gold so I can upgrade my uh, my orgs to org mages. <laughs> 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 and it's like I got no excuse. It's in the game, it's written out. O G R E, like the, the R comes after the G. Like I've got no excuse <laughs> other than the fact that I've been calling these fuckers orgs uh, for for all of my life. Uh, he looks at me and says, "Do you mean ogres?" And it's one of those. It's one of those like. There's not quite another feeling in the world that's like you understand that you've been saying something incorrectly for nine years, and it's like it's a special it's a special kind of shame that I feel. <laughs> and it's much like the anime, like it's you, and then the glass shatters, <laughs> and then like cuts to a bird flying away, and, <laughs> and then there's a cold breeze with leaves, <laughs> yeah, that blows over me. Um, that's actually in the same conversation. I learned that I had been saying paladin wrong. Did you say uh, paladin? I said paladin. Yep. So did so did Josh and I. Um, so, hey, live and learn, I guess. Mm-hmm. But still, uh, even now, like when I say ogre, I like there's a split <laughs> second of hesitation because it's like I know ogre's correct, but that shame runs deep, <laughs> and I can't shake it. Well, see, now I see why you bonded with Brandon Eves of Axelay fame so so well, because he also had that problem playing through Tekken 3 with him. Yeah. And the boss of that is Ogre, and then his second form, True Ogre. Uh-huh. We get there, and Brandon's like, oh, fuck, Ogre. <laughs> oh, True Ogre. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just in my face in my hands, not wanting to humiliate him. Uh, you know what? In situations like that, you just pull him aside privately and say... <laughs> Look, man, before you make a fool of yourself at a Dragon Con. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Or uh, also notorious Ashley Shake of Fist Puncher fame. He'll he'll say words, just c- pronounce it how he thinks it's cool. He doesn't matter how. It's, I just think it sounds better this way. You mentioned vinyl. In vinyl instead episode. of vinyl. Uh, I called it, I think he is the one that got Josh and I say Paladin instead of Paladin. And it so um, does kind of Sweetikin instead of Sweetikin. Sweetikin. <laughs> so we called it Sweetikin yeah. for a very very long time. Uh, Doslam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Instead of Dalsim. <laughs> so yeah, just, just whatever he wants to do. Yeah, I dig it. Rolls. I you know what? Maybe I should have I should have just owned Org. <laughs> <laughs> I like it better that way. Fuck it's, it. It's more fierce. Ogre. Org. No, no. Org. <laughs> Org. They looked more like orcs, to be fair, in, in gummy bears. They look they don't look like like orgs. They look like orcs. They do. They look like a mix I mean maybe some goblin. A little a little troll in there. Yeah. That's something, yeah. Man. Poly polyamorism for <laughs> all goblinoids. For goblinoids. It's fine. Thank you. I guess bug bears would have been a better term for what they are. Yeah, okay. Not to be confused with owl bears. I'll ha- I'll have a link to all these <laughs> mythical creatures in the show notes. <laughs> Tyler and Dave talk about mythical creatures. I would be in for that. If I had more time, that could be a Friday show. <laughs> it's a it's our more niche thing from cryptozoology to just 
tabletop fantasy cryptozoology. I, I just want to go through the D and D monster manual one by one. We'll just dedicate an episode to each, each creature. Each one. <laughs> Now an Abolith. Uh, I haven't had any mo- many run-ins with those. Have you, Tyler? <laughs> no, an Abolith. Mm. What's an Abolith? Let's get on the tape <laughs> reads from Wikipedia trade about Aboliths. Okay, guys. Aboliths <laughs> are giant scaly fish creatures. <laughs> I remember watching uh, Jacob York of Wolf Fighting fame looking through the D&D Monster Manual 3 for the first time. Yeah. And just laughing. Because, like... Monster Manual 1 and then 2 have, like, oh, things yeah. you've kind of heard of. I see. You're not and talking then, about the third edition Monster Manual. You're talking about... Uh, 3 point, 3.0. Not the sequel to the Monster Manual, but the follow the sequel to the sequel. Where they're continuing to stretch it out. Yeah. And just where creatures get more and more ridiculous. Like the, the tie-dyed wolf with wings instead of legs. Yep. I don't remember yeah. that one. I don't remember hearing that about it. any other kind of mythology. <laughs> Uh, Grateful Dead mythology runs deep. <laughs> the lore is rich. <laughs> all right. Ogre battle. I'm going to let you know right now, I just accidentally deleted all my notes for this for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm meticulously prepared today, so I'm going to wing it. I'm here to yeah. but I, I've memorized everything. <laughs> well, first, because this, this game is very different from any game we've done on the list so far. It is. I'd say, well, I mean, it's not, I guess, a huge far cry from Populous, but that is the only thing that's remotely similar to it. That's true. So I guess before we really break it down, can I list, listen for a little something? Uh, sound of sound of orgs battling. <laughs> org, org, org. <laughs> battling. Org, org. Paladins. Oh, great. <laughs> is there, there's a, there's a, <laughs> Tony is going to, and Nicole are both going to like yell right now. Is there an element... The palladium, <laughs> like, is that a thing? Yeah, or is is it that is. a mineral or uh-huh. something? It is. That word always fucks I, me up because I, I my love for the the periodic table runs deep. So <laughs> yeah. I have I haven't put it up in the new house, but I do have a large frame periodic table I really like. Is that so, how you pronounce it, or is it palladium? Because like I've only seen it on the periodic table. D and D has fucked that up for me. Yeah, and like mispronouncing it for years and years as paladin. <laughs> So I don't know. I don't know what's right anymore. I would probably say palladium. I think. Yeah, yeah. that's what how I, that's how I read it when I would stare at my periodic table of the elements <laughs> over my bed because I've got my periodic table of fantasy elements next to my periodic table of actual elements. I remember I okay. That's that's an, I'll save that for another intro story. Which do you like better? Just real quick. Which is a better table? The real one. Nice. Oh wow! I'm kind of surprised one. you went that route. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Okay, guys. The org train. The org engineer <laughs> is driving the train. Is that what you do? Yeah. Or I guess you we don't could, pilot we could be it, saying, right? Well, I mean, piloting is you pilot. That's just driving a vehicle, right? Or, I, I suppose. The guy, the, the org conductor. Conductor? Is, he conducts the train. He's conducting that fucking train. <laughs> I hear it coming around the bend uh, for a little segment that we like to call Dave Reads from Wikipedia. Okay, guys. Ogre Battle Colon. The March of the Black Queen, known in Japan as Densetsu no Oga Batoru, Legendary Ogre Battle, is a 1993 real-time tactical role-playing video game directed by, here's more Japanese, and these are names (laughs) that I should have memorized, but I don't, uh, directed by Yasumi Matsuno with artwork by Akiko Yoshida. It is the first installment of an episodic series and was originally developed by Quest and released for the Super NES. Since then, it has been released, re-released several times for Sega Saturn, PlayStation, Virtual Console, and it says cell phones, which got my hopes up. And then I looked (laughs) on my iPhone. It came out for like one Japanese cell phone. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. (laughs) So... So I special ordered that phone. Yeah, so that's <laughs> that's due it Wednesday. <laughs> Next Wednesday, I'll let everyone know how that is. <laughs> well, well, next week. Well, Dave died. He got some kind of ring version of a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> I got to play that game, and when I die, someone else picks it up, and then the ogre comes out of the television and <laughs> pulls him to I don't know Ogre Land, wherever the fuck ogres live. <laughs> so the, playing through this game. Uh, it has a lot of things that I certainly appreciate about about games in general and games of this type, and I feel like I should, I feel like I should love this game. Yeah, I certainly 
spoilers for the episode. I don't I don't hate it. It's just I like I love games that are very similar to it, but I'm sort of ambivalent about this game. Well, I was going to ask you, uh, you kind of I guess answered that question a little bit. Did you ever play this game? Have you ever played it before? I played uh Ogre Tactics for uh, GBA. Okay. It was the first of the series. I never played this one. I had never played any of the the Ogre games. Mm-hmm. Um, but the first thing that, and this ties in, I think, with what you were saying, is that it reminds you of a lot of games that you like. Um, this game reminded me a lot of Final Fantasy Tactics. Yeah. Um, from a lot of different things. Um, the use of tarot cards. Um, there's Zodiac gems in the game. Um, the art style is pretty, pretty fucking identical. Yeah, to Final especially Fantasy once Tactics. you zoom the the other battle the battle screen you go into when enemy units. Yeah, because it's on like each other. when you battle, it's like isometric overhead. Mm-hmm. Um, the character portraits for all the NPCs are strongly Final Fantasy Tactics art style, and it's because it's the same artist mm-hmm. um, who did it, and I I couldn't. It couldn't shake the feeling that I was playing a primitive Final Fantasy Tactics. Yeah, I mean, that's totally true. Because I remember, and going, because I played Tactics first. So going back for Mm -hmm. me when I tried to do Ogre Tactics didn't really work. Because, like, all the things that I love about Tactics, now I just feel... Final Fantasy Tactics. Final Fantasy Tactics Uh are just, they're just too rough. Like, I feel like Final Fantasy Tactics is what Ogre, all the Ogre stuff was evolving into. Yeah. and But also, like, I feel like... There's this game, Ogre Ogre Battle, runs side by side with like the Shining Force series, which I haven't played. I know you you were talking about the Sword of Haja. Love love the whole series, before. and if the those two series coming together and having a baby, that is Final Fantasy Tactics. Okay, so Does Fire heard, Emblem fall in this category at all? Fire Emblem is a little closer to attack uh, to uh, Shining Force than it okay. is this. Okay, so like, is there dating in Shining Force? Uh no you can't you can't <laughs> produce offspring that will go into battle for you. <laughs> yeah, forget so, it. Forget it. Never mind. My battle babies. Mm, just going against the whole purpose. Battle of... babies. Tm. That's all we're gonna make. <laughs> Battlebabies.com. That's, is it a, that's why I got Meg pregnant because I want to raise a warrior. <laughs> you want you ha- you're having a battle baby. So and everybody wants a white mage. So I was like, I'll have a girl because you know that's what Meg always was in in RPGs. So I'll have a white mage. So she'll always have a party no matter what she wants to do in battle. All right, so, I'll make a tank. battle baby. Tank will be my battle baby. Good deal. I figure. <laughs> I figure tank is your territory. Are you sure you don't want to? I just, don't want to claim it. She'll. Uh, she'll just gain levels quicker. Yeah. She'll. So. She'll be more valuable than my baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. My, my baby is gonna have all kinds of gear repair. Don't fucking worry about your baby. Doesn't have to An worry Irish about that. white mage baby. Uh. Well. Yeah. Be fine. Be good. <laughs> yeah. You're set. And then I'll sell it for a really high value later once it gets a high level. Yeah. So. Level eighteen. Yep. What level seventeen? <laughs> Depends on what you're selling your character <laughs> for, I guess. So what do you like about games like this? I I enjoy the just the tactical aspect. I enjoy putting a party together and the different job classes and finding out different combinations. And then I like the overworld the overworld map. Two it two big issues I had with this game is that you just kind of you have your central city and there's the opposite city that you're supposed to take. Yeah. And then you're Units just kind of ooze out of the castle, and then there's no like grid or anything, so they just kind of slowly move over the territory to the other castle, while the other creatures from the other side are slowly moving you towards set, you. You set their waypoints, yeah. and they slowly crawl to those waypoints. There is a speed option in the game, um, which helps a little bit. Yeah, You can turn it all the way up. By default, it's on two out of a scale of three. You can increase it one notch. A little bit. It helps a little <laughs> bit. It's still kind of infuriating. And um, if your Super Nintendo has a fast forward like mine does, <laughs> I would use it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so what else? What? Um, I agree. That's that's also a gripe. About this would have been a I lot have. better because it feels sort of like populist, like it's a something that was meant to be a. PC game that's just been stomped into a console because with like a mouse clicking on the points and then yeah, there you have a cursor. Up, everything would have been much better. Yeah. yeah, so I you know I, I appreciate what they're trying to do mm-hmm. because it's you can't control all those units. I mean, with the D pad, you know, since you're controlling several units, you don't just have one unit that you're controlling. Um, and then 
Final Fantasy Tactics, it's been a really long time, but the overworld map in that game is just just an overworld yeah, map, right? Yeah, you're just going, I mean, yeah, it's not, a literal map, yeah. and then you have a little almost stick figure that walks yeah, between we just go from shining dot lights. to dot, yeah. right. So, I mean, that really doesn't come into play at all in this game because pretty much, well, there is an, there is an have, over overworld map. Yeah, <laughs> but then you go into that to the other overworld map, and then from that... A lot of maps in this game. <laughs> and I don't... I would have had much more fun if I could have, when the enemy units fight, if I could have had direct control over every unit. Like, you can set a strategy, but yeah. I would have enjoyed it if I could manually control each character and pick which which ones at what time and what abilities I wanted to use and things like that would have made it much more fun for me as opposed to it's all auto being battle. God. Yeah, and it's all just automated. Everything is automated in the battles, uh, which bugged, bugged me at first, but I actually grew to love. Um, once again, thanks, fast forward button on my Super Nintendo. Uh, <laughs> That that helped that a lot too because it was just like I don't know I even got to the point where I turned the animations off because it was like I enjoyed them all mm-hmm. the combat animations but it's like ah, I mean I've seen them all before you're just showing me the same animations I kind of want to like you know just make I just want to I just want to make a strategy and make it work see if it works if it works great we'll go mm-hmm. on to the next one so I don't know I guess because I had the ability to play the game faster than it was intended. Yeah. I actually enjoyed the game um, a lot. And I would consider finishing it in the same breath. I'd probably rather play Final Fantasy Tactics again. Yeah. As opposed to playing this finishing this game. And you have a you have a pause option in this game, which it made it easier, but I wish it wasn't there. Yeah, because every t- everything's real time. Yeah. So like all your enemies are moving, regardless of whether or not you are. So it, when you need to stop and think, which is always, mm-hmm. you need to hit the pause button. And while you're paused, you can set your units to go to different waypoints, um, rescue, not rescue, liberate mm-hmm. uh, cities, which give you bonuses and items, which I thought that's a cool that, thing. That is cool, yeah. Because it's temples, have monks raise your dead units and right. things like that. And, and you can, re- if you liberate inns or towns that have inns, your units can stay there and they regain health. That's cool, too. So it's not really as cut and dry as your units come out of your base, their units come out of their base, and you clash. Yeah, this game has a lot of depth. It is long and has a lot of depth and a extraordinarily high learning curve. Like, yeah. playing this on release at my age, at that point uh, in technology, like, I would have been incredibly frustrated. Yeah, I, but I think it's one of those games where if you learned, like, if you had a friend who told you how to play Mm -hmm. um i'll speak for myself this is a game that i probably would have loved um because it's that kind of game that's perfect when you're middle school and you don't have a job uh, and you Mm -hmm. don't play sports so (laughs) you come home from school and you're like hey you know what i think i could play 10 hours of ogre battle (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah this would be this would be a good game to take to a desert island along with populace and you get a lot of a lot out of it uh and i believe it was phil who told us uh Sandwich, Sandwich Knight. Night. Sandwich Knight. Phil told us, get a guide. Play this alongside a guide from the start. And he, he was, was right. 100% right. Yeah. And yeah. the game facts, like, you can tell, like, this game has some, this has a strong fan base. Yes. Because you, I found almost every game facts to be indecipherable because they just hit you with numbers oh, and stats yeah. and every guide from the start. Like, yeah, I yeah. just want to see, hey, take me to battle one and tell me what's up and then explain it. But nope, they just break down every little detail, and there's so much detail. It's stat block after stat block. Oof. And from from reading and playing, occasionally you'll find one of your units will just happen across buried treasure. Did that happen for you? Yep. Um, apparently, these items... There's, there's plenty of buried treasure in, in every map. Yeah. And in order to get the best ending of the game, the game has 13 endings. Oh. In order to get the best ending of the game, you have to meet certain criteria. And some of that criteria is based on whether you find certain buried treasure or not. Um, a lot of it's dependent on... Oh, I don't like that at all. Yeah. Because that's, I mean... At least in Final Fantasy Tactics, the secret dungeon where you have to everybody has to have move find item is optional i can't imagine if move find item was a requirement for the best ending alignment comes into play too that's um a unique mechanic i think in real-time strategy games especially so early Mm -hmm. is that this game has an alignment mechanic 
Um, that goes in hand with the day and night mechanic in battle. Yeah, exactly. Because as you move, you go from night to day, and then... Because time progresses. Time goes on as you fight and as you move your units across the field, and... So this game of Breath of Fire. Yeah, day so far we got, we got... See, when they're so close together, I don't think that's a coincidence. I think IGN, they know where their daytime, nighttime <laughs> games go. <laughs> um, but as you do... And alignment's kind of weird. I, I like the idea of having it in a game like this, but I think it's handled poorly because the way alignment works in the game is if you're a higher level and you're fighting lower level opponents, you your alignment goes down. It's on a scale of zero to one hundred. One hundred being good and zero being evil. Mm-hmm. Um, if you fight, if if your units, let's say level five, for example, and you're fighting a level two unit and you beat it, your alignment goes down. And you're I guess because you're massacring. Does uh, that I mean warfare? It always has to be. Yeah, you know that's how fair. that's how rule we're totally just. No one uses underhanded tactics. They respect I, boundaries. No one uses poison. Yeah, or, yeah. It's very honorable. It's very honorable in war for all reasons. And you know we're just a ragtag group of rebels in this game trying to I don't know uh, disassemble uh, an entire empire. I'm sure we're gonna we're gonna be <laughs> fine playing by the by the book. So I guess, man, America's we must have had a our alignment must have went way down fighting the the British in the Revolutionary War because they were fighting, you know, honorably tactics. Oh yeah. And then oh, America, no. we must have been just so evil. No, our alignment. Down. That's why we got the bad ending. Uh, yeah, that's oh, why oh, yeah, oh. that's why we got the you bad like, ending. You, maybe I love this stinging satire yeah. of America. Political from this satire. Video game here. podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's how we roll, you know. And that's why George George Washington was a lich. His his alignment hit just bottom of the barrel, and we elected our first lich president. <laughs> he didn't want it like a lich, just like a lich. <laughs> ain't, ain't that like a lich? Classic lich move. <laughs> you know, he stop really that lich from it. shopping. Because <laughs> liches just love to shop, shop, shop. <laughs> so if you. If your alignment is low, you'll get a, a bad ending. Um, essentially, when the game ends, I hear, because I didn't finish it. Mm-hmm. Um, because, let's face it, guys, this is a weekly show. I can't just finish every game. Um, if you if you finish it with a low alignment, um, you get a bad tarot card. Because you're based on how you play the game, you're given a tarot card at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, and I believe all of them where you have a low alignment are, are bad endings where, um, you know, you're able to uh, restore the, the empire as it was, but at a consequence. Because mm, the, the lower your alignment, the better you fight at night, and the higher your alignment, the better you fight at day. Right. So it's, it's, it equals out. It should be like strategy, depending on, you know, how you want to use your units. Like, of course, a werewolf and a vampire, you can get those jobs mm-hmm. eventually. And they function much better at night. And then you have like other like princess Paladins. and Paladins. You don't really have Paladins. I just wanted to say it. <laughs> knights. You have knights. That function much you know stronger during the day. So And you can mix and match them in your party whoever you want. So it's just, yeah, it shouldn't have an impact on the ending. It just should all be strictly, you know, strategy. The good news is I think the alignment restriction for the end, what end you get, is based solely on your hero. Uh, all your other units... Um, actually, I think it's a good idea to have good and evil mixed mm-hmm. because you don't want to get trounced at night. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you don't want all your units to have 100 alignment because you'll get fucking trounced at night. Yeah, by werewolves and liches and George Washington. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what are you gonna do? Crossing the Delaware at night, man. This is just adding up, man. <laughs> On Christmas, what? What did we find out? <laughs> I want to unlearn this. We're gonna get assassinated. We're gonna get killed. Illuminati <laughs> yeah. are gonna come in through your windows and just fucking kill us. I want a graphic novel of that. I want a graphic <laughs> novel of of us finding out George Washington's secret, and then like Archi- what is it? Archive his corns next next book can be. That's a, we've given when you've given you your million dollar idea. Archive his corns. What is is it? The Daughters of the Revolution is that the org, is that the name of the organization? Yeah, or the uh, whatever that that organization. They're the organization. in Gilmore Girls. Yeah, they're the ones that come after us because of all of our misogyny in our podcast. It just makes sense. <laughs> all the undead daughters of the American Revolution <laughs> they come in to kill us. <laughs> the literal daughters of the revolution. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> that George Washington raises once we find his phylactery, which, <laughs> of course, is a pair of wooden dentures. And we, we, you already know that Abraham Lincoln's a vampire. That book's already come out. So 
Or is he a vampire or is he a vampire slayer? Spoilers. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> spoiler. Worst ending. Awful ending of that book. So, yeah, spoilers because it's such a bad... I enjoyed the book to the end, and then he becomes a vampire, and it's like, what the fuck? This is Abraham, Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln. Lincoln. Vampire. Mm-hmm. Hunt, vampire. Vampire. Hunter, hunter, hunter or vampire I slayer. I fell asleep during the movie. I didn't read the book. I got. Did I tell that story in the show where I got really drunk and yelled <laughs> at the screen and then fell asleep at the theater? <laughs> Watching that movie, uh, it was probably I'd say in my if IGN were doing a top ten list of classy moments in my life, <laughs> it, was, it was on there. <laughs> probably <at> number three. <laughs> uh, okay, ogre battle. Back back to ogre battle. Uh, I gotta say, like I enjoyed the the strategy that they implemented, but day and night, like they're pretty swift on how how often it comes around. You can get. I got tarot cards left and right. They were constantly making it nighttime. Which you get, you get tarot cards from liberating cities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fourteen at a time, mm-hmm. and use them in battle, and they each have like a different effect. Which I can appreciate that element of chaos, but it also like it, it was it was strange that that was incorporated into it. Yeah, I liked the, the tarot cards in battle because it it was nice to be able to do something in battle. You know what I mean? Like it, yeah. it felt kind of nice to like have. <laughs> it's nice to participate. Yeah, in this game. have a little bit of control in the battle. The game kind of does play itself. I'm glad you said that because you literally you could turn the game on, start it, make your hero, start the first map, and just set it down. You'd lose. You put all your just drag all your deploy all your posit deploy all your units. Have them go to the city you're supposed to conquer. Set something on the fast forward button, walk away, come back. Oh, hey, look, I played this game. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You Make got sure a good you point. have a healer in each party because they automatically heal like every single turn. That's so. another thing you lose alignment for is killing clerics. If you kill a healer, you lose alignment. And if you mm-hmm. don't kill them, they just keep going back to their base and getting reinforcements. God. It's ridiculous. I don't know. We're not Batman sending people to Arkham. Just just, right? just kill them. <laughs> right? Please? Um can I can I say something about this game and its first impression? Please. There is a typographical or translation error in the f- second screen of the game. The, you the <laughs> very first you turn it on, you click new game. I'm sorry, you select new game. There's no clicking. Um there's an icon that you think yeah, there's it clicking. It feels like <laughs> there should be clicking, but there's not there's no clicking. Because I enjoyed the system at first because it kind of it asked you a bunch of questions about your beliefs and what you think a leader is and things like that. And I like that. It's I wanted to it, ask you about it's that. It's taking a page out of Ultima's playbook, but I still like it. It's a personality quiz, essentially. Mm-hmm. And, and if th- you're friends with me on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> we all know you love personality mm-hmm. quizzes. Mm-hmm. I, I'm with you. I share that love as well. <laughs> so I did really enjoy creating my hero. Because yeah. um, I, I am an ENFJ who is the element of water. And <laughs> What's your spirit animal? Uh, it was... Shit, what was my spirit animal? I took that one. Mine was, uh, a, mine a, was a fox. I, I think you hawk. were a hawk with yeah. Raven coming in soon yeah. after that, were you? Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I got... Send, I, Ted Pog Nation, send us your best personality quiz. <laughs> yes, please. We'll take it and do we a special episode about it. We've probably taken it. We'll, we'll do the other shit Monday, the one with all personality quizzes. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought about having a personality quiz ready to oh, ask man. you on this episode. That would be good. Um, but I'm glad I didn't take the time to do that because my notes are gone. Um, I, do, I can tell you that the hero that was created for me based on the questions, I believe, is called a Thunder... Thunder Flame Knight, and that is you can get four one of four heroes based on your your answers. I answered them all honestly. Mm-hmm. I wanted to play. I wanted to play my hero as me, which worked out because I just ended up hiding out at our base while I sent everyone else out to fight. <laughs> so I mean, it was perfect. Um, but I was starting alignment of low, uh, low neutral. Mm. There's low, which is evil. There's low neutral. There's high neutral, which figure it out and then there's and then there's high i i believe i was i want to say i was high because i remember like my party being very good what were your what were your hero's abilities i see i can't remember okay because it that's how you tell what you get and i think the sprites probably look different too but my dude just cast thunder a whole lot um so that's how i I figured it out i bet i was my party's healer okay uh yeah that was probably probably super high then so 
I don't yeah. know. Wish I could speak with authority. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> this is this is a very ambiguous uh-huh. show. <laughs> Yeah, because my, my party leader was a cleric, so I, and I I played a lot of this game with one unit because I didn't know. I mean, I was just fumbling my way through it, kind of looking through stuff. So my first two battles, yeah. I beat with just just my primary unit. I so. did I did the same thing, except I obviously hit out at base like I would, and um, sent out the knight, the first knight you get. I think it's Lars. Lars, Lars mm. thank you. Uh, I just everything I found, I would just equip on him. I got a, found an evil blade. Threw it on him. He just fucking tore through everything <laughs> at night. Because I remember notoriously, it's sort of like when I was reading the um, the game pack about it, that it's evil characters are much more powerful. But if you want to recruit people and, con- you know, when you liberate cities and things like that, you want to do it with liberate parties with a good, pl- a good party that has lots of charisma. Yeah. Because charisma is instrumental for you changing your job and recruiting allies. Yeah, if you want it to be worth a damn then you have to go good, which I think is kind of shitty because otherwise you get a you get a poor ending. See, and I feel like that's sort of the that was an issue that I had with the first Dragon Age game. Yeah. Because there are all these evil abilities and evil choices, but you're you're only punished for doing it. So like people will you know, you can call Alistair a dickhead, but he'll he'll leave he'll eventually just leave you. So Dragon it's one thing I think Dragon Age two did better is because if you were mean to somebody you developed a rivalry in different abilities. Right. So it was still like you could it play was, however you yeah. wanted to play and you weren't punished for it. It was deeper. It's well. just a shame the gameplay was got boring in that <laughs> yeah. game. Yeah. Uh, I didn't I never got a flying unit, but I read that a, a common tactic for the game is just have nothing but flyers. <laughs> oh yeah, just, can no one touch go you. Through. Yeah. I, I thought about building an army out of ghosts. <laughs> Did you encounter any ghosts? Uh-uh. There's a forest where there's a shitload of them, and every now and then I would I could recruit them. I'm willing to bet it's because I, I didn't know this at the time, but I think it was probably because uh, Lars Lars right mm-hmm. <laughs> was was leading the group, and he was clearly evil. I had him just like I would just buff him up and send him out and destroy <laughs> all the all the uh, fucking army. Yeah, and it was just because. I guess I was getting more and more evil because I was higher level than everyone I was killing. Yeah. Killing clerics without... I mean, he was just a... He was a modern-day George Washington, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, and he was able to recruit ghosts. And ghosts are like, you can't... Ki- In this game, you can't kill undead with normal damage. Undead are the, the by far the toughest unit you can you can have they have to be healed to death or i think uh someone can cast holy on them or you can use a tarot card which i never had an enemy use a tarot card i don't think the i don't think the computer com- uh, uh, opponents can okay. um so yeah man if i had more time i'd probably just build my ghost army i think that's i think that's my strategy yeah, i think only yeah you have to have clerics obliterate undead but everything else just nope don't and lars a chance. lars is he's experienced in murdering clerics <laughs> So once he takes the clerics out, it's it's done. <laughs> He's like, oh, when you come to the city, oh, you've liberated us. I will join you and kill the masses. <laughs> you got to make ghosts somehow. <laughs> <laughs> you can't win a war without making a few ghosts, Tyler. That's all. That's all I'm got to say about that. But then, uh, yeah, a common complaint about the game was that you have to have a guide. There are so many weird, obtuse people to recruit, and the buried treasure thing. Like you, you kind of you just. Man, Brady Games probably loved this because it was essential that you bought that guide. I think I read somewhere that the original publishing of uh, the Nintendo Power that gave tips for this game mm-hmm. got alignment wrong. I think it was alignment. And like because of that, so many guides were copied from that. Yeah. That it was just just it was like the printing press of false information of misinformation <laughs> like to this day i was reading well, the guy one of the guys who wrote the game facts was like everyone thinks this is right it's not right it, everyone thinks it's right because nintendo power published it and then everyone just took it as word of god <laughs> <laughs> so i read something about like beast lords like Everyone thought beast lords like used them against beasts, but no, they love beasts. I know they do less damage. I know beasts. that's what I thought. <laughs> I thought that's what you used them for too. Until I realized uh, these guys are worthless. <laughs> knight, you got to go knight all the way. Knight, I like the knight class. Um, a lot of the classes felt like one trick ponies. Yeah, because like uh, what is it? Witch just cast stun over and over again. Um, clerics only healed. I don't yeah. think I saw a cleric do anything else. Knights pretty much just only attack. Fighters only attack. Mm-hmm. Pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of variance. 
Um, wizards always cast a well, they don't always cast a spell, but um, something that's interesting is since all the battles are automated, um, your wizards and your spellcasters choose the most effective spell versus the opponent. Okay. Um, so you never have to worry about, oh, am I doing, is everything going the way it should? It, it, they're optimizing for you. Yeah, because you can, you can choose best, which is to attack, you know, yeah, you the get, party. You get four tactics to choose mm-hmm. from in an automated battle. There's best. Leader, where you go after the person with the highest hit points. Yeah. Weak, where you go after the person with the weakest hit points. Right. No, leader no. is you go after their leader because oh, each okay. squad has a leader. Strong is where you go after Strong, the exactly. highest hit points. Okay. Um, and best is like a balanced uh, version, uh, a balanced tactic. Um, if you go leader, which I would go quite frequently, because if you destroy someone's a squad's leader, that squad essentially is scattered to the wind. Uh, they return back to base and get reinforcements. So that's the only drawback. Um, of going again, going for the choosing the leader mm-hmm. tactic. Uh, so I would frequently um, <laughs> create this elaborate tactic where I'd f- I'd have a flanking unit ready to move up as soon as the leader was destroyed. So uh, Lars would just straight up murder <laughs> the leader <laughs> that of the in, in the enemy squad. The enemy squad would start retreating, and then I'd just move that second unit up a little bit to to intercept them on their yeah. way back. So that's what the game that's what the game's really all about. That's if you enjoy that kind of thing, this is the game. This is a good game for you because it's strategy tactics. The story is just bare bones. But yeah, I the mean, story's th- pretty bad. Th- th- this could have been this game could have been made on a chessboard with chess pieces and just have the chess pieces move around. It could have been risk the game and Dude. it I didn't even pay attention to the story. Yeah. I really didn't. I really didn't because based on Warren's the Warren the Spectre slash Wizard. Yeah. Based on his like first introduction in the game, um, I was like, you know what? I can't take that. I can't. I know the story isn't going to make any sense. It does. It's like you were born to lead the revolution. Whenever you walk into a city, you're leading the revolution. Yeah. You lead the revolution. Go to this city. All right. You went that. All right. We believe in you. Let's go. Yeah. It's a lot like Bioshock Infinite, uh, and it ties in that George Washington aspect <laughs> so well. I mean, this, it all just comes back full circle. <laughs> I mean, the Vigors, I think the Vigors and um, Final Fantasy Tactics are better than the Vigors and uh, Ogre Battle, but, you know, that's just personal mm-hmm. preference. I'm with you. Uh, so really, this game, it's 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 fun and it's entertaining, but it's not exactly my, my cup of tea. Uh, I enjoy the Final Fantasy Tactics series and the Shining Force series better. I feel like this is just kind of a second tier franchise, but it's just, I guess, for people who enjoy the cerebral element more than... The entertainment factor of like a story and character development and stuff like that that I really, really enjoy. Do you think this game has a place on IGN's top 100 I do. Super Nintendo games? I do. It belongs? It, it's, I feel like it belongs and it's right. It's positioned right for what it is because it's entertaining. It's different. It's certainly not for everybody, but you know, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad it's out there. I, I can certainly appreciate it. So yeah, I totally think it should be in here and 40, 41, top, top 50. I so. agree. I think it belongs. Uh, and honestly, if I had all the time in the world, I would sit down and I'd finish this game. Uh, I want to see, I want to see, honestly, I want to see. If George Washington comes in, right. turns you into undead, so you then therefore have all the time in the world, you're going to beat this game. Y- yeah, well, I would. If he bestows upon you his dark gift. I don't bend the knee to many people, but I would bend the knee to uh, great lich George Washington. <laughs> In a, in a heartbeat, I would, because then I'd probably meet a sexy necromancer. And his, his 30 wives, the daughters of the American Revolution, which are all <laughs> <laughs> Right. Man, we just wrote some awesome <laughs> fiction on this episode. Um, we should have been dropping trademarks, like, left and right, man. <laughs> <laughs> we got baby battle. We got, yeah, That's the one we got. We can't be too greedy, right? <laughs> do you have achievements for this game? I do. What you got? I have three. Uh, my first one is Five Nation Army. And that is where you claim a city using only one unit with five people. Mm. I guess we could have, we can break down the units a little more because you have dragons that we take could, up like we could have two to three spaces. There, there, there's all kinds of shit. Yeah, <laughs> that take up various spots. But really, anything that takes up more than one spot is isn't as good. You may as well have five humans of some kind of job. Yeah, I agree. Really. I agree because the beasts, uh, unless unless they're ghosts, <laughs> unless yeah. they're ghosts. Uh, my second achievement is mortal enemies 
and that's where you have a vampire and a werewolf in the party at the same time. Okay. And the last one, uh, Disney Squad, where you have a party of all princesses. <laughs> nice. Okay, sweet. So there, are, I think the princess like just gives bonuses to other units. So bonuses that, can recruit and things like that. So I read that, that they're kind of the best class in the game. You just have to have a special item to turn an Amazon into a princess. That would be, well, you know, that's the classic tale. <laughs> that's the classic. That's on reality television. <laughs> You cut off your I, you cut off your breast to hold your shield tighter to your chest, and then you become a princess. Isn't that what? Um, isn't that what like all reality shows are? What's the What's the Swan show? Isn't that what that's all about? You blow my mind. I've, mm, there's you know, one about is there a Swan it's, about like it's it's the horrible reality show. Unattractive in, girls in becoming which, attractive. Right, they undergo like horrendous. Plastic oh, they surgery. have them actually do plastic. Yeah, you're right. Like, like the winner gets like plastic surgery done to look how oh, they want to look. That show, like, I, I, just, I don't think it's on anymore, right? Like, I'm probably making uh, like a 2004 reference I had to, here. I had to dig deep to remember what you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's old, but like, it's still, I still carry that around because I just think the concept of that show is just like, uh, it makes my skin crawl. <laughs> Yeah, but if you had a if you had a squad just full of princesses, they'd just be up in each other's stats the whole time. Exactly. I like it. So. All right, I'm going from memory here, but I do have some achievements. Okay. Um, the first one being, you can't be serious, and in order to unlock, you can't be serious. Um, you have to beat the stage boss, who is named Serious. Um, he, <laughs> this level. He is. Um, a werewolf, mm-hmm. which which you don't know. I actually like that it's revealed to you as you liberate cities. Um, you get little tidbits that um, this serious fellow isn't who you think he is. Um, and then you go and, and fight him. You, you pretty much gather that he's a werewolf. And uh, because of that, I figured, hey, I'll go fight him during the day. Uh, he won't be a werewolf because the fucking sun is out. Uh, I show up at his castle, mm-hmm. and uh, he says... Um, can you come back later tonight and we'll take care of this then? <laughs> I don't think so, serious. You can't be serious. <laughs> so that's how you unlock it. You have to beat him as in his human form. See, I approached him at night as a werewolf and he was like tearing through units left and right. And when the day came, uh, then I noticed, then he looks different, asked me, I'm not feeling too well. Can you come back later? <laughs> Fuck you, man. But it's one of those, and here's another little fucked up things about this game. It's one of those hidden things. Your beastmen units can be upgraded to werewolves, um, but pretty much you have to fight him at night in order to do it because they have to get the werewolf virus. They have to contract lycanthropy mm-hmm. in order to do it. So it's like if you do the smart thing and fight him, if you do the tactically sound thing, the most basic of strategy, oh, he's going to be stronger at night. Let's fight him in the day. You're punished for it. Mm, yeah. So I don't know. I think it's it's counterintuitive. And like that bothers me in a game like this because it's like you should be rewarded for making smart strategy decisions, right? Yeah. You would no, think. I, and I guess we also didn't hit on it. Every time two units meet, you have like three turns, and then whoever does the most damage wins. Yeah, they're declared And the, the loser winner. scoots back like two inches and then Yeah, they retreat just again. a little bit and then just come back. It's kind of... When it's, you get enough units clumped together like that, it's, it's a, a fucking cluster nightmare. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to sort that out for a couple <laughs> hours. I, I heard some people online even talking about how some of these battles, like in later on in the game, like go on for three hours. Ugh. Which I could hang with. I think I'm not going to lie. I could probably hang with that as long as as long as I'm winning. I'm not going to lie. As long as I'm winning. <laughs> as long as I've got my ghost army, I'm fine. <laughs> However long it takes. And I've got another achievement. Mm, hit me. It's called Regulator. In order to unlock Regulator, <laughs> you have to go the entire game um, without Warren dying. Mm. Warren can't die. If if you make it the entire mm. game, you unlock Regulator. See, now I only get that reference because of the uh, Brian Williams, Jimmy Kimmel rap. I'm unfamiliar with this. I, I believe it was Jimmy Kimmel who, on his show, they edited together clips of Brian Williams saying all the words to Warren G. Regu- the yes. Warren G. Regulator so it's, so song. So it's him, it's him rap- rapping yeah. that, that, that entire song. Show notes? Yeah. Mainly for me, because I want to yeah. see this. <laughs> They've got him doing a few songs. So. I mean, G-Funk stepped to this. That's all I got to say. You know, now you lost me. <laughs> I remember the words. That's not what happened. <laughs> um, that's all I've got. I've got a little bit of trivia, mm-hmm. if you're interested. I, I am. Um, Enix 
uh, distributed this game mm-hmm. in the United States, in North America, uh, but they didn't develop it. It was developed by Quest. And one of the interesting things is, if you haven't heard about this game before, which I hadn't, I heard about uh, Tactics way mm-hmm. before I heard of Ogre Battle. Uh, it's because Enix distributed, I think, 25,000 copies of this game in North America. Oh, not a lot. There are not a lot of these cartridges around. God, this around. game has to be so expensive. I looked on eBay. I saw one... I think the cheapest one I saw was $200. Um, I saw another one, I think, for 300 bucks. So, I mean, I don't know. You probably really got to like this game to drop that kind of cash Man, on it. I it's don't a good know. thing we happen to have that copy. Oh, it was great. And, I mean, it only works in the Super Nintendo with the fast-forward button, mm-hmm, though. Mm-hmm. So, it's one of those, like, TV uh, Super Nintendo combos. You know how they do, like, the VCR and all that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. Yeah, it's really it's a rare edition. So. Oh, yeah. The ASCII Super Nintendo that yeah. has the fast forward and turbo buttons. Yeah. <laughs> the i5, the Pentium i5 Super <laughs> Nintendo. That's not an admission of guilt, by the way. Mm, <laughs> Tyler. Yes, Dave. I had a lot of fun today. Good. good. I'm glad we were able to reconnect mm. uh, and talk. I've, I've been, been out, out of town. town. Yeah. Uh, I met up with Lord Dennis. I haven't come in four days. <laughs> 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 Almost made it an episode. <laughs> it was close. Hey, Gone Home was pretty clean. Uh, you're welcome, Jacob. I <laughs> uh, went up to St. Louis. Lord Dennis uh, t- took me to a place called the Neutral Zone, which is an arcade up there. It's like got as many arcade games as Game Galaxy in Nashville, but it's like mm. compacted into a place of business about the size of Tadpog NX. <laughs> oh, shit. So it's like the hottest building in the world because <laughs> it's just, and it was crowded. Like people were there, like, like there were definitely more people there than there's ever been at Game Galaxy when I've gone, and it's like the dude behind the counter, just one dude. He's selling candy and drinks, and it's like <laughs> going crazy. The only my only complaint was that beside the size of the building, it's like every other game was Street Fighter versus X Men. It was crazy. It was like every <laughs> other cabinet. It was just like there's seventy cabinets here. Like at least thirty of them are <laughs> Street Fighter versus X Men. It's ridiculous. So Tadpog Nation, feel free to call the neutral zone and ask. <laughs> you guys got Street Fighter versus X Men? Yes, just- <laughs> please. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Lord Dennis, for turning me on to that awesome place. I'll be going there every time I go visit. Mm-hmm. Nerby's uh, family. I'll, mm. I'll make a visit to the neutral zone. Um, with that said, Tyler. Mm. Yes, Dave. If you were to give this game a beard that just encapsulated what this game is about, what kind of beard would that be? Well, it's it's a it's a combination beard. It's a it's a two part beard. Uh, King Theoden of Rohan. It is his his goatee as both a decrepit old man being controlled by. Saruman, and then his <laughs> restored Gandalf version. Okay. All right. Okay. I dig it. I dig it. Tyler. Yes, Dave. If you were to give this game a pair of glasses that just it put on every morning as it gets ready, it brushes its teeth, combs its hair, and it puts these glasses on and goes out to face the world, mm-hmm. what kind of glasses would it be? I would give it glasses that a, a wartime strategist who is, who is directing uh, his medieval army has a large map. In order to see all the details of the map, he has these large magnifying stones that he slides with a little stick on oh, yeah. the battlefield. Right. Two of those. Two of the sticks? The, the, the glasses. <laughs> okay. Two. Oh, okay. Well, we can start giving out beards and sticks. <laughs> beards and sticks. <laughs> I got confused at the end. There's a... I, I sent you the the bit. Um, I was watching uh, just some YouTube stand-up, and there was a British comedian who's talking about... Man, just the uh, what is it about the combination of beards and glasses that just attracts so many pedophiles? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So why, uh, listeners, like, yeah, why are kids just so attracted to guys with beards and glasses? <laughs> 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 so that's why we divide it up and uh because if we were to do the fusion dance, it would just be prison. I think for our last episode of the show, um, this is going to have no impact on the listeners whatsoever because this is all audio. <laughs> but I should wear contacts. You should shave your beard. <sighs> or I will grow the shittiest beard possible <laughs> and you wear glasses. Okay. <laughs> if I can lose a lot of weight where I feel comfortable shaving my beard. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Wish I had a beard, dog. I'm jealous. I'm jealous of all you beardos. Well, see, I, I I could do with some hair on top of my head that you have copious amounts of. I do. I've got I've got 
a just a mane. You got luxurious just like, locks. Oh man, they just cascade down my <laughs> shoulders. It's so sexy. That's what we all do when all the guys get together. We just comb Dave's beautiful hair. <laughs> <laughs> you make dreads. Yeah, that's what we're going to do at the cabin weekend here in the next few weeks. We just wash and, and break Dave's <laughs> wonderful, wonderful hair. To be fair, Jacob of Wolf Fighting fame also. Good head of hair on that guy. It's true. It's true. Good head of hair. I'm, no offense, Jacob, but I'm really hoping my hair holds up longer than yours. <laughs> Let's, you got a lot more going for you, okay? You got a lot more, Don't get angry. You got a lot more going for you. You're in shape and you're, I mean. Tall. Tall. I'm, what I would give to be fucking tall for a day. I give, I give up all of this, Tyler. All of this that you <laughs> see in front of you. Tad Pog, I'm sorry. I love doing it. I love doing it. And, and I don't want to forsake the show, but I'd give it all up to be tall for a day. Well, all you have to do is you go uh, downtown and you find the gypsy machine. Yeah. Oh, and you right. put a quarter in and you just wish to be big. That would make me an old man, wouldn't man, it? Man, I said gypsy machine like it was a weird thing. <laughs> <laughs> Going down to the old gypsy machine, just cranking out gypsies. Let me tell you, last time I went down to the Paducah's, gypsy machine. Paducah's biggest expert in Romania, <laughs> gypsies. <laughs> they really don't like being called out. No, they don't. Machines, I mean. <laughs> so, oh, man. Oh, that's all I got. That's all I got. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll be we'll be back next time. Mm-hmm. See, I, it's so dark in Ten Bucks in Here. I can't read my notes. Yeah, I know. You want me to turn the light on real quick? Here, let me. Here we go. I got it now. Thanks for listening, everybody. You can find the show on iTunes or Stitcher so that you miss the next episode. Uh, for other shit Monday, it'll be a a special interview episode with a with a guest host, someone you love. Maybe <laughs> somebody you probably don't care much for, but that's his that's his shtick. He's not so, an adversary. No, <laughs> weirdly enough. Uh, and then the episode after that for uh, next original flavor Wednesday, we'll be talking about IGN's fortieth ranked game, Earthworm Jim Two. I hope you like it. I hope you like it better than Earthworm Jim. I probably will. I hope you do. It's it. It's, it probably won't break my sanity. It's got hopefully. more. It's got more mucus. So oh, you've already got that good. going for you. That's what I thought. I was like, yeah. If I was playing Earthworm Jim, I was like, man, this is too dry. God, where is it? It needs some lubrication for some this game. Dairy products. <laughs> While you're there, don't forget to subscribe. Give the show a five star rating. Write a review. If there's a game you want us to do, include it in that in that review, and we'll get to it eventually. 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 Don't worry, guys. Like Tyler said, uh, we're we're gonna be back. Whether or not George Washington appears to us in the middle of the night in a graveyard may or may not happen. I don't know. <laughs> Even if it does, and I become a lord of the undead under the service of our first president, George Washington, <laughs> and his 30 daughters of the revolution and his ghost army, I'll still do this show unless he makes me tall, in which case, fuck it. <laughs> tall <It's> gun. <laughs> In the meantime, if you can't get enough Tadpog goodness, you can always find us on Tadpog.com. That's where the show notes are. Uh, We're going to have British people talking about pedophiles. It's going to be a good time. Check it out. Uh, You can also find us on Facebook. We're at Facebook.com slash Tadpog. There are a lot of cool people doing a lot of cool shit. Uh, You know, we don't get as much art as we used to, Tyler. So, you know, hey, if someone could send me Lich George Washington. Baby battles. Baby battles. Yeah, baby battles takes it. Man, Lich, Lich, uh, George Washington, that sounds like some color mage John Sullivan territory if I've ever heard it. <laughs> if you're looking for an idea. If, if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're like bored of taking care of your kids yeah. and working a job, John Sullivan, do smart for us. Yeah, I mean, you know, we know we'll pay you in compliments and well, <laughs> you know that we'll say something about it on the show. That's clearly yeah. worth yeah. dollars. <laughs> Dozens of people are listening to this. Just yeah, like- I mean, you could reach you could reach all 20 people who are listening to this right now. <laughs> Thanks friends. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks mom and dad, Meg and Never. Nikki. Never mom and dad. Maybe sure. my grandmother. Jacob's I, Jacob's mom, your grandmother. Yeah, I think I think my grandmother's probably more disgusted than Jacob's <laughs> Jacob's mom. So. but you know what? Just calling to check on your urethra, David. Yeah. You, you want to answer my phone call, so I have to listen to this stupid show you do. 
<laughs> By the way, you should say fuck less. <laughs> uh, we're also on Twitter. You can find us at Tadpog underscore podcast. We've got an awesome crew on there mm-hmm. uh, tweeting at us, promoting us. Uh, I love it. Thank you all for what you do. Um, if you if you haven't followed us on Twitter yet, uh, think about it at least. Yeah, um, consider it. Lord, uh, Exalted Lord Micah Purdue, if you'd like to tweet George Washington and let him know that I'm ready, willing, and able to join his undead army, <laughs> uh, feel free. Or really any lich, I guess. Any lich that's on Twitter. Uh, is Dick Van Dyke on, on Twitter? I think he's still in the process. He's still crafting his phylactery. Okay. Sid Caesar just died, so it's still things are still happening. Is is there is there a good lich? Because Dick Van Dyke's the good lich. Yeah, he would be. That's I true. mean, yeah. he, the man danced with a penguin. You don't get much neutral good than that. He saved enslaved children. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he's an angel. That's true. And he did. That and he there. stayed pure, sleeping in a different bed from his wife all those years. I wouldn't have done that. Laura Petri would have been, I mean, I would have driven oh, that, man. that woman mad with penis. I, th- <laughs> I think you are hard pressed to find like just a more beautiful human being than Mary Tyler Moore circa Dick Van Dyke. Yeah. In, in black and white, she's great. Yeah. In black and white, she's great. Mary Tyler Moore show came well, around. Well, that was years later. That, so, but in color, yeah, it's not as, but in black and white, Laura Petri. Yeah. Very nice. I'm glad. I'm glad that our our retro sitcom. So whenever the world, like I used to think when I was little, when the world became colorized, because it used to be black and white. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's how it works. So I asked my grandma, "How weird was that? <laughs> what was it like? Man, that must have been like so weird to wake up one day like that. Back when you were little, when Abraham Lincoln was president, because they changed presidents every year, right? And I'm counting backwards. Mm-hmm. Wow. Ever, ever since George Washington and stated that. <laughs> you can call us if you want. Mm. You want to call us? You can do it. Um, Kyle, since, since we've started, our, our, the, the rules have been restrictive, so we've gotten <laughs> a lot less calls. We apologize. <laughs> Just call, call and ask us questions. We still like it. We still love you. Yeah, we definitely love you. Uh, you can call us at 270-883-2555. Quick shout out. This is very timely. Mm. Um I'm going to be at the Lexington Comic Convention here this weekend, like on Saturday, which is what, I don't know, the 17th or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't even think that's right. I'm going to be there this weekend. If you're listening to this when it comes out on Wednesday, guess what? I'm going to be there next Saturday. (laughs) Uh, If anyone listens and is in the area and you want to meet up, let me know. Um, I also know that Archivist Corn Mm -hmm. is going to be there. with his comic or his I don't know if he calls it a comic or if he calls it a, a manga um, it's definitely manga inspired but it but it reads the correct way it reads left to right okay. so I don't know I don't know what the proper <laughs> vernacular is uh, please correct us uh, but I think he's got a booth so if somebody you're there, will call saying manga right yeah I and, you know I flip back and forth I, it, it's proper to say manga I, I say manga and typically whoever I'm talking to about it will then reply yes I also love manga so <laughs> I, I normally say manga I don't know I think maybe because I don't. I guess just because I'm so infatuated with the idea of serving George Washington and his <laughs> Legion of Evil, I can't think straight. Like the true, the true Kentucky in me is coming out. My, manga, main, love manga. my manga. Love it. Uh, that and your Japanimation. <laughs> but if you're, if you happen to be in Lexington, um, let me know. That's I, it. I'm just gonna stay home. That's it. You should come. You should come. I wouldn't go to Lexington for pretty much uh, anything else. I got I got that new Professor Layton game in. I'll just oh stay, yeah, I'll just stay home. All right, just sweet, home. sweet. Well, that's all I got. So that's all I got. So until next time, Tropical, Tropical Capricorn. Capricorn. Have I talked about shooting in front of my family?